Since World War II, the United States government have been able to manipulate the weather. Uh, that's a fact. You can look it up. Since the 1960s, we've been able to control and even weaponize the weather. That's a fact. You can look it up. In the 1970s, the United States Congress put forth a bill to regulate weather manipulators. That's right. In case you had some sort of a weather manipulation tool, the United States government wanted you to register it with the United States government and get a license for it. On November 13th, 1946, pilot Curtis Talbot working for the General Electric Research Laboratory. He climbed up to the top of a local area, local peak, 14,000 feet high near Schenectady. I love that name. Near Schenectady, New York. Talbot, along with another researchers, released just three pounds, just three pounds of dry ice into the clouds high above Schenectady. And suddenly it began to swirl. Suddenly ice crystals formed and then it started to snow. Big, big snow uh, was a result of that. The first man-made snowstorm just after World War II. Then experiments continued into rain and mani manipulation of tornadoes and hurricanes and it came quietly. Then came Project Cirrus which has been recently declassified. 1947, U.S. experiment along with the United States Navy, the Army, General Electric. They attempted to control hurricanes using cloud seeding. It was aimed at reducing the severity of storms. But guess what? It did the exact opposite, and efforts actually redirected a hurricane right towards Georgia. Look at the path of this hurricane. They started seeding the clouds after the hurricane had already gone through the southern tip of Florida and it was heading out to sea, moving away from Florida. It literally redirected it away from Florida. Then it's, once they started seeding the clouds, look at this. It redirected it back into Georgia, bringing devastation to Georgia. 